Conan's next update, The Age of Heroes, has officially been showcased on the most recent dev stream, and there are some long-awaited features coming. If you didn't have time to catch the stream, I'm going to recap everything you need to know here, so grab a coffee and let's look at The Age of Heroes. There's a fair bit to cover today, so let's dive into it with the first big feature of this chapter, Living Settlements. If you're fed up of boring static thralls standing around and doing nothing, that is about to change. Firstly, as the dev team have said they wanted to do before, all crafting thralls are now world thralls, meaning they are present in the world and can be dressed up, moved around, ordered to follow, placed on seats and so on. They're also now capable of combat, but of course they won't be as good as actual combat thralls. Instead, whilst they can fight back, there's a chance they'll try to flee the encounter or simply cower in fear, so they are by no means a replacement for a good fighter or archer. Hearing that, you may wonder what will happen to your crafting thralls when this update goes live. Well, crafting thralls that are on a bench will be itemised and placed into the inventory of that bench. Then, you can just take them out and place them in the world. Thralls you might have already in a fridge will remain itemised until you place them. Once you've placed them, that is it, they are in the world. That alone is just the foundation of living settlements. Alongside being able to dress them up and potentially have them defend themselves, your thralls will no longer just stand around waiting for direction or endlessly working a bench anymore. Instead, thralls now have a fairly simple system of needs and wants, those being food, water, rest and work. These needs are entirely cosmetic, you don't need to provide actual food or water and so on, but when the need arises, and if there are facilities nearby to do so, your thralls will head over to a nearby campfire to eat, a bed to sleep, or just take a seat and rest somewhere. Your thralls are, for all intents and purposes, basically role-playing. The idea here is to make your thralls, and your base, feel far more alive and real. From my understanding from the stream, thralls will go to their nearest source of fixing whatever need they have, so you can keep those facilities close so that thralls aren't all vying to get into your personal bedroom, for example. Hearing that, the immediate question is probably this. If thralls can wander away, what happens to my crafter bonuses in benches? Well, the way crafter bonuses work is changing slightly. Instead of the current system where you slot an itemised thrall in to get their specific benefit, you can now choose from the list of nearby thralls. As long as thralls are within 50 metres of the crafting bench, you're able to click a drop down menu and select their special crafting traits, so you can use the bonus of a shield right or a temper right for example, without needing to swap thralls in and out of the bench, and as long as they're within that 50 metres you can use their bonus without them even physically being at the station. That being said, thralls set onto guard positions like archers and fighters, and entertainers too, will ignore any needs they have and will not leave their post. If the tavern system added a gentle breeze of life into your base, this is a whirlwind by comparison. Thralls don't just work 24-7 now, nor do they stand around like decorations. They will now work, eat, drink, sleep, and live in your base. For everyone that wanted their bases to feel more alive, this feature seems targeted directly at that. The system is apparently wide open to modders too, so everything can be changed, adjusted, and tinkered with. This feature seems incredibly immersive, and I'll be deep diving it as soon as the beta comes out, but we'll cover that later on. The second major addition in this update are Companions. These are a new class of follower, but they are vastly different from thralls or pets. Rather than throwing them in the stables or knocking them out and putting them on a wheel of pain, these are fully characterised and voice acted followers that won't just join your ranks, you'll firstly have to earn their trust. I am Lu Fei. Sorcerer to the Celestial Emperor of Kitai, Master. Each has a unique and special quest, and once you help them finish their journey, they'll join you as a new permanent follower. There are two new companions coming in this update. The first is Lu Fei, a Kitan sorcerer that may have made some poor choices and needs your help. The second is a familiar face, Freya, a Nordheimer woman that's actually already in the game. Her being a unique companion won't affect the existing Freya thralls, they won't go away or change, but they also will not be the fully voice acted version of Freya with the unique questline. 
Dennis also mentioned that the old spawn point of Freya will also be replaced by this companion Freya, so while she will continue to exist if you already have her, her spawns as a regular thrall will be discontinued. It seems the quests are handcrafted for each companion, and follows the themes and steps of the story that brought them to you in the first place. You'll be able to find these companions out somewhere in the world. These quests seem to be a bit more than just bring me this or go there, instead you'll be aiding them along their very own path. It was also mentioned that the quest lines aren't something you can just do in 10 minutes. Each quest is a good few hours worth of content with natural breaks where the companion will want to rest, so once you start you're not hard locked into that activity until you complete it. Alongside that the choices you make in their quests will dictate which perks they receive, as these companions will gain special unique perks that, again, are decided by how you handle steps in their quest and the choices you make. Once you've earned their trust and they're converted to a proper follower, you're able to review their perks and see which choices you made and how they affected the perks you received. If you're the replaying type, you can acquire another one of these companions and make different choices to see what perks they gain in that scenario and that mix and match to suit your playstyle. These companions are only available on the Exile Lands currently as their stories are crafted specifically for this map. Dennis also mentioned that the perks these companions get will be more unique and specific than just a flat damage bonus or something like that, they'll be unique to that character and relevant to their story. Additionally, completing a companion quest will not only give you that character as a follower, but also a bunch of rewards including recipes for armour, placeables etc that are relevant to that companion. I know a lot of people wanted more questing elements, especially within the tavern. Whilst it doesn't seem these companions will interact with the tavern system, I'd say they do a lot more to build on the idea of questing and becoming a hero, in a way. I know people grow quite attached to some of their thralls, well this really just steps it up a notch. Rather than a thrall you'd knock out, break and use all the time, you now have a real character whose trust you have to earn, one that will offer unique perks alongside fleshed out dialogue and quests. They also will do stuff like comment on places they visit and just other general chit chat too which is a nice touch. This seems like a huge jump for those that wanted more questing and longer term tasks to undertake that aren't solely self driven activities or events. Just like the living settlement system I'll be deep diving on the new companions when the beta client drops and giving you all you need to know to unlock these new followers. On the bizarre side of things, it's first worth noting that the battle pass is gone from this chapter onward, so no battle pass from now. On the bizarre front, there are a few things mentioned and shown, some of which were pretty interesting. I'll give you the short form rundown, as I'm going to do a more in-depth video on what's coming by analysing what we saw in the dev stream. Firstly, an extension to the Argosian building set, in the style of a Corinthian observatory. I have pretty high hopes for this, it wasn't what I was expecting but what we saw looked really impressive. There also looks to be some new armour in keeping with the Corinthian style, there's a new Argosian starred caparison horse saddle with emblem support, and I also spotted some Corinthian placeables again in the observatory style that seem to mesh well with the rest of the observatory items. This is only a brief preview of what we were either told about or that I managed to catch a look at during the stream. More details will of course follow when the update hits the live servers. Alongside the flagship features there were also a couple of miscellaneous additions and changes mentioned. Firstly, worker thralls will now also have new idle animations and audio for the various activities they'll do around your base, including new and frankly better animations at different crafting stations, making them a bit more interesting than just standing there and crossing their arms and watching the station. Both maps now have thrall rescue cages across the map, where you can rescue the barkeepers and other thralls too without having to do the purge, which is a very nice alternative way of acquiring a barkeeper. Additionally, crafter thralls are now back in the purge loot pool, as now they are world thralls they can go into the purge reward cages. In reference to the living settlement system and the distance from which you'll be able to get crafter bonuses at the workstations, Andy clarified that for those benefits, the 50 meter radius that was earlier stated is around 19 and a half foundations from the bench itself. Dennis also said earlier on in the stream that if people feel the 50 meter radius is a bit too restrictive it can be changed because it is literally just a number value. As of right now, follower limit is currently the same as it has been before, 
and because your worker thralls will get converted to items when the update hits, it won't suddenly jump up without you placing them down yourself. The QA team are currently running performance tests in relation to the Living Settlement system and how it will perform on official servers, so the follower limit may change in the future, but that will be announced ahead of time if anything does change. On the books front, there were mention of two high priority books, those being Falling Through Foundations and Undermeshing. Both are very complex issues and are incredibly high priority that they're still working on. By the way it was described, it sounds quite complicated. For example, Dennis said something to the effect of an aggressive fix on undermeshing could result in people just randomly dying as they walk over a patch of ground, which I'm pretty sure has happened before after some undermeshing fixes, so it's complex stuff. To be brutally honest, likely too complex for me to fully grasp anyway. My ideal scenario would have been them to come onto this stream and say yeah the bugs are fixed, but to be fair, at least the issues weren't ignored. I doubt there's more they can say without getting into technicals that very few of us will probably understand, but hopefully it is fixed soon, it does seem like it is the utmost priority. So the final thing that I'm sure you're all waiting for, the release date. The Age of Heroes Chapter 1 is currently targeted for release on the public beta client on August 22nd. Full release on all platforms is currently slated for some time in October, there's no solid date on that yet, but that date will come further down the line. That's a really solid month, maybe even month and a half to two months on the beta client. We usually get two weeks, so hopefully the extra time is used properly to find issues and rectify them. I believe the last time we had such a long period on the beta client was when they were introducing the new purge, so it wouldn't surprise me if we have this extended period to really test out how the living settlement system actually performs. Hopefully it's fine out the gate, but if not, there is enough time where hopefully the team can go in and do some tweaking and some fixes to make it as good as it can be when it comes out on all platforms. Overall, a pretty unexpected though very interesting set of additions. The living settlement feature is honestly my favourite thing from this update. I have often wished I could just have thralls milling around the build without having to set out thespians from Pippi, or use complex mods to set individual routines. Role players will doubtless love this feature, but even if you're just a standard PvE enjoyer, it seems like living settlements will really make your base feel alive, especially as you go from one or two thralls to a whole wealth of them. Companions, at least on the surface, didn't appeal to me that much at first. I'm a solo player in basically everything. I never used a companion in Fallout or Skyrim, and I generally don't use them in Conan either, but as the devs revealed more, I'm honestly really attracted to the idea. If I'm going to have a companion, I want them to be interesting with personality, and it seems companions will have just that. The quests to recruit them sound engaging and much more enjoyable than just fetch quests, and I'm very excited to see how it shakes out and work out the stories of Lu Fei and Freya. Anyway, that wraps us up for today's recap of the Age of Heroes Chapter 1 dev stream. Again, the public beta is slated to drop on August 22nd on Steam, and full release is scheduled for sometime in October, and of course I'll be covering all the new features, news, changes, lore, and plenty more right here. Make sure you subscribe and join the coffee cult so you don't miss a thing, and if you'd like to get all the news as early as possible, do check out the Patreon where you can be one of the first to see new videos, get wallpapers, discord rolls and more, all while supporting this channel directly. Thank you for watching and of course a massive thanks to our wonderful esteemed coffee cultists for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. Take care, and I'll see you soon.